In treating older patients with acute leukemia in particular, there's a lot of questions as to whether it's better to treat patients with a lower intensive therapy or a more intensive therapy, and how to choose patients who you are more likely to get to remission and to good quality of life with high intensity versus low intensity therapies. So I have a clinical trial uh, using a drug called laramustine, um, which used to be called chloridazine, but it's going up for FDA approval in September, and its brand name will be laramustine, together with infusional ARIC um, to treat older patients over the age of 60 with AML who may or may not have had treatment with other agents for a preceding hematologic problem like myelodysplastic syndrome. I also am uh, working on a clinical trial with Judy Karp, who is a leukemia doctor at Johns Hopkins, um, using an oral regimen to treat older patients with, with acute leukemia at home. And it's a drug called Tipifarnib, which is also known as Zarnestra, uh, together with an oral drug called Atopicide, which is a very old drug used to treat acute leukemia. And this is an oral regimen that patients are taking at home with the goal of keeping them out of the hospital completely for their treatment of acute leukemia, which is kind of a novel idea because in general we have kept patients as inpatients for long periods of time to treat this disease. And this is a real effort to try and treat people at home with their families and their regular setting. Um, and I'm really excited about potentially developing oral therapeutic regimens for patients who have acute leukemia so they can be treated at home or as outpatients. Doing everything we can to keep an older person functional at home, I think, allows them to withstand the rigors of treatment better and to have a better overall clinical course. Um, so those are two trials in acute leukemia that I'm working on. I also have some trials that I'm working on in myeloproliferative disorders. We're going to be opening a trial looking at a, a new HDAC inhibitor in patients who have myelofibrosis. Um, we currently have a clinical trial here with patients who have myelofibrosis that's evolving to acute leukemia using arsenic and cytarabine in low doses. Dr. Gail Robos, who's one of my colleagues, has basically uh, opened this study and pioneered this study, but it's a very interesting because it's a very poor prognosis disease, and we have been seeing some responses on this trial. And um, we're also opening a clinical trial shortly of a long agrolin, which is a drug used to treat essential thrombocythemia or thrombocytosis, is a, um, is a three times a day drug, which is sort of difficult for patients to comply with. We're going to be testing a 24-hour version of that drug, which is kind of an exciting thing for patients who are enslaved to this drug. So those are some of the things that I'm working on right now. I'm also working on some decided being based therapies for older patients with new acute leukemia, and I have clinical trials that I'm currently in development using decided being in combination with other agents to treat older patients. Mm -hmm. The other things that I'm working on are really unrelated to therapy, but trying to figure out ways to look at which patients might be better suited to more intensive therapies versus less intensive therapies and looking at ways to measure what frailty is and what would make you more susceptible to having a very you know, devastating clinical course with chemotherapy. And this sort of work is really translatable to all different kinds of cancers, not just blood cancers. But I'm looking at new ways to measure activity, muscle mass, um, uh, strength, and older patients trying to determine what their overall fitness is really before starting chemotherapy and looking at whether or not particular fitness will make you better suited to withstand uh, certain more intensive or less intensive chemotherapies. So that's another um, area of research which, which is ongoing for me and I'm using new technologies basically to look at questions of for example, I'm looking at activity levels, what the baseline activity levels are in older patients and whether more active patients will withstand chemotherapy better than less active patients.
So looking at things like uh, pedometers and activity watches, uh, actigraphs to look at activity and to look at that in conjunction with uh, their comorbid illnesses and other things to try and determine what fitness might be. I'm looking at new ways of measuring muscle mass and new tests measuring strength, grip strength, you know, how well they walk up the stairs, all kinds of things. So really trying to get at the essence of what fitness is and, you know, maybe also what we can do throughout our life to maintain fitness so we can better withstand treatments for all different kinds of illnesses as we grow.